Again, we're in a council meeting, so when you do wish to speak, please stand. Just take your position, and, and that way we can recognize whoever is standing. Uh, just a couple of items. Uh, March is Kidney Month. I just want to give you a brief description of uh, uh, Kidney Month. Uh, it's Thursday, March 11th, 2021, World Kidney Day. Each day, one in ten Canadians learn that their, that their kidneys have failed, and this number is on the rise. 45% of new kidney patients are under 65. The survival, their survival will depend on dialysis treatments or a kidney transplant. Um, in 2019, kidney disease was the 10th leading cause of death in Canada. Mm -hmm. And there are currently 96 people on Prince Edward Island uh, receiving uh, hemodialysis dialysis treatments three or more times a week. Um, Last year, the Kidney Foundation of Canada, Atlantic Branch, provided over $18,000 in financial assistance to Islanders and their families with kidney disease. March is Kidney Month, and March 11th is World Kidney Day. And on this day, our iconic bell tower will be lit up in the color of magenta, which I believe is a little more burgundy, the red, or a pinkish color. Yeah. And as mayor and council, we ask that the month of March be observed as Kidney Month in the city of Charlottetown. And the second item, as you probably know, um, this is World Women's Day, correct? And I just have a quick, uh, so, International Women, Women's Day, a, glo is a, globally, a global holiday celebrated annually uh, on March 8th today to, commem to commemorate the cultural, political, and socioeconomic uh, achievements of women. It is also a focal point in the women's rights movement, bringing attention to issues such as gender equality, reproductive rights, and violence against women. So, I uh, wanted to acknowledge those two events today. And declarations of conflict of interest. I think there is one for sure. Deputy? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Under the planning report, uh, number one, um, that's my employer, so I'm assuming I'll be in conflict on that, uh, that resolution. So it's that clearly being stated in this conflict. We're all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, approval of the agenda. Your Worship, there okay. are a couple things to go over. Okay. As item 6.12 is not in compliance with section 42 of the procedure bylaw, it uh, will have to come off and it is also at the request of Council Tweel. Uh, with regards to item 6.3, uh, the telecommunications policy and the memorandum of, of under, sorry, and, and MOS for the QP501 civic contract issue is added to section 6.3. What was the first one you said 6.2? 6.12. Oh, no. 6.12. Yes. And, and yes. what was that one? <coughs> and sorry, and then 6.13, is that the one you're referring to? No, Council? the very first one. 6.12 is the uh, one that was going to be brought forth in regards to the CAC, but it's not in co compliance with Section 42 of the procedure by a lot as such as. So the one on the BBC is switched off. Correct. Yeah. <coughs> Under new business. Okay, so that won't be coming forward it's at any gone. time? No. Oh, okay. okay. Councilor Tweel, anything else? Yeah, uh, your worship, not feeling well. I was just wondering if we could move uh, finance the capital projects to the first item, so I can vote on that and then sign off. Okay, finance audit and tender. Any problems with that? So six point two becomes six point one. Six point one becomes six point two. Easy math. Good. Yeah. Okay. So approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Bernard. Second by Councillor Ramsey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now we have a <coughs> previous draft minutes. So you have two regular monthly meetings, February 8th. Special meetings open, February 22nd, and March 4th, 2021. Yep. Moved by Councilor Bernard, second by Councilor Ramsey. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right, good. Business arising out of the minutes. Seeing none. Can we go to the first report? Deputy? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, our committee met uh, 
five times since our last council meeting and those uh, reports and minutes are in your package. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. <coughs> uh, I think we have a couple of resolutions for council to consider tonight also, Your Worship. Any questions with the report? None? Do I go with the first one, Mr. Kelly? Yes, Your Worship, moved by Deputy Mayor Cody, signed by Council Rivera, just that the City of Charlottetown enter into the attached sponsorship agreement with the 2023 Canada Winter Games Host Society, Inc., and that the Mayor and CR hereby authorized to execute such standard contract and agreements required mm -hmm. to front of this resolution. Any questions? Councillor Bernard. Councillor Coley, this, this here <coughs> resolution, this is just for the uh, sponsorship, correct? We're still on still on the go. And this is just the one by the sponsorship from the city of Charlotte. We're still this this, this this is inside of the uh, capital project agreements. Uh, this is actually operational. Yeah. Right, yeah. So there's another one coming. Uh, there's more money than the 1.8 for capital for Canada Games. Comes oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right? Yeah. This is the first part. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Question called? Yeah, question called. Okay. All of those in favor, please raise your hand. Uh, Councillor Tweel, yay or nay? In favor. Councillor Todd? I in favor. Okay. So 10, uh, 10 0. You get another one there, sir? Yes, Your Worship. Moved by Deputy Mayor Cody, so by Councilor Bird, that Council adopts the 2021 2022 City Capital Budget in the amount of $68,564,137 minus partner funding of $22,865,920. The City's budget allocation be for partner funding of $19,270,400 for parks and recreation. $33,388,200 for public works, $140,500 for police, $3.4 million for fire and emergency preparedness, $5,510,000 for transit, $2,764,950 for community sustainability, $994,000 for information technology, $2,212,000 for carry, $892,000 and $825 for Eastlink um, Center. And the council adopted 2020 capital budget for the Charlottetown Water and Sewer in the amount of $11,550,000 minus partner funding of $7,350,090. And further, that the staff be authorized to tender projects and return to council for approval of issuance of long term debt associated with the capital expenditure program at the appropriate time when funds are required. Deputy, seconded by Councilor Rivera. Any questions? Of that? It's in your pack. Mm -hmm. There was no, sorry, hand over. It was in the special meeting package, generally. Oh, okay, yes. You have the special sorry. meeting package there, yes. Councilor? Yes, I got it in the drawer here. Sorry. Councilor Bernard. That's just the one that um, the CAO read out, uh, if I heard it right, 68 million? Yes. Mm -hmm. 22 of it is proper funding? Yes. Yeah, I have it right here. 22.8, 22 million, 865,000. Um, here, here. I thought we were at 31. So it's $68,564,137 minus partner funding of $22,865,920. You have 26. You see, $7.8 million there for uh, the Honeywell. That would be for, um, let me just see if finance is here. That would be it. Call it. Let me just check and see if it's. <coughs> Little pause. I got 34 million. I thought we would talk 31. Mark, are you on the line? Mark's here. Who, me? No, M Mr. Lanigan. Oh, next door. Yeah, he's coming in. Just while he's coming in, last week, uh, Stats Canada report that uh, Canada's, Canada's economy shrank by 5.4%. And that was the steepest contraction since records began in 1961. On average, we're usually a 2% increase, 5.4%. So any injection to the economy is going to help. 
Thanks to the city of Charlottetown. So, Mark, um, Mark? staff are looking for some, sorry, council are looking for some clarifications. Council Laird has a couple of um, questions for you, please. So, Mark, I understand that the CLA, that the budget is 68 million, 22 of its partner funding, which is 46. We had 12 carryover, which is 34. And I thought in our discussions we were more of a 31. That included the 5 million for sales. So, there's a difference here of $3 million. Yeah, so 45, and then we had 12 left over from funds from last year's borrowing, and that's 45 bring down to 32. When you say left over, is that your, is that your carryover? They're about the same. The, the money in the bank is approximately the carryover. Right, so we, it brings it down to what? I have that. Mm -hmm. So okay. that brings it down to about 32 net new boring requirement. Okay, so what I what I heard if I got this direct 68 million. Yes. 22 was part of the 22. You know, that gives you 46. Yep. And you take 12 off that, you got 34. 34, well, um, so it's it's 45.5. Take 12 okay. and a half so off that. Five. Take 12 and a half off. Okay, we're at 33 five. You're at 32. Yeah, I thought we passed it at 31, 200. Mm -hmm. we, well, we did do a few changes there. Uh, we're in that 31, 32 zone. Okay, so we're 33 five. So we're still 30, at least a million yeah. over what we talked about. Yeah, that's that's where it came in at. <coughs> so this is just a change in numbers. So that's what we talked yeah. about in the budget. They come out with thirty-three five. Okay. You're around thirty-three actually. Yeah. Okay. Because we finished up the other night with a not 31, 31 two. No, I think we I think we started at thirty-one. We started where I think that we added a few things. But we added the council. We added the outdoor right thing. But the outdoor multi-use so. At two hundred thousand. Yeah, that there was. Yeah. A, there was <laughs> No, I think there was something else added. There was an error on the partner funding side. Transit, there was some, transit. Remember, there's some calculation differences, and we had to correct those transit differences as well. Yeah. Correct. That was brought up that night. Oh, we took out 200000 to correct that. So is this the one? Yeah. I'm not sure. We're at 33. This is with all, all the changes. Yeah, but we discussed all the changes. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I kind of, I mean, to me, if it's a couple hundred thousand, uh, but over over a million dollars, I kind of like to know where it is. And I don't have the, <clears throat> you guys said you put the new the budget on our desk? Yeah, that's, that was put on today, right? The revised budget? Yeah, special meeting. Last Thursday. Yeah, and today. And today. But so. the resolution that was in that package was revised this and that's what he has right there. Exactly. Yeah. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. No, no, no. That's the budget we had last week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 As always, we never spend the whole thing. I think, Council Commander, what you're looking for is an updated document like this. Correct. To show what we're talking about. Is that that's right? what's right there. To show where that, why it's 33 spots or not. Well, I, I guess when we left after the closed session, we talked about it. When, Thursday or today? Uh, Thursday and today. Thursday. Yeah. We were at 31, mm -hmm. 200,000. Mark? And I'm trying to figure out, uh, if we're at 33,5. I can't, there's too many numbers rolling around, and right. it's too hard to know where we were to where we are. I know where we are now. Right. Yeah. And we're at, where are we at now? We're Thir at 33. Yeah. Okay. It's amended. And it's noted, correct? Okay, so it's, it's, it's just the multiplication yeah. of figures? It's a combination. Yeah, it's a combination. I'm not sure what's the latest one you have, Councilor Denari. Yes. The latest one? Uh, what it says. What I had last night. I know, Thursday night. Thursday, I'm sorry. I, I have to kind of look at the one you have and compare it to the one that we had today. 
identify the differences. Yeah. Right. There were no changes today. Information technology, nothing changed. Nothing. So, so nothing changed. So it should have been the same as Thursday night. Right. The only Thursday night we were dealing with thirty-one million dollars. Yeah. And we put back a couple hundred thousand. But I recall that's thirty-one two. So we're we're talking two million dollars. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I'd like to know what it is. Yeah. Pretty much. So. Either, either, or we suspend it until we find out. Or we pass That's it when we find out. What's that? Or we pass it and find out. But you, you pass the budget. We, we have to get our capital budget in place now. And as, in years past, we've never spent the 26 million or the 30 million. It's always been half. Correct, Mark? For me. We've all, in the past, like for example, last year, we probably spent 50% of the capital budget, <coughs> and then there were carryovers. Yes. Yeah. So nothing else that you know was added besides from the top? No. There was no. nothing added. No. Just mis 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 yeah, I don't know if there was a misinterpretation by you or just you're looking at the old numbers, but there was no new initiative passed no. from what we had discussed as of last Thursday. Thursday uh, and today. Bernard, and then today, there was nothing today. And Thursdays, if you want to take a look at them, yeah. I have to sure. both. And the numbers are the exact same numbers. As so, the two. so the sheets I have would be the exact same number. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I'm just comparing the two. So that from Thursday to today, there's no changes. Yeah. There were no changes. So we should, so we should be at thirty-one million two hundred thousand, not thirty-three five. Well, those right. are the numbers from Thursday night. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing else there, so I don't know. But I think what we're going to find out, Mark, is that it's probably 33 million, what we're voting on tonight. There was a miscalculation from Thursday. You are. Yeah. yeah. Then what we have here is the same figure we have Thursday night. Like yeah. 49.7. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually 49.89. Yeah. That was the additional. That's the total. So, say, so you can round that out to 50,000. Yeah. yeah. And you can take the twelve million off of the carrier. Mm -hmm. So you're at thirty-eight. The carrier is twelve point five pounds per. What's that? The carrier is twelve point five. So you're at thirty-seven five. And then we have the Honeywell, which is seven million. Yep. Seven point five. So that took us down to thirty-one. Yep. And that's the one off these figures. Yep. So as to have the in case we haven't added any other projects on other than what has been been discussed by council. So then there's some since then there's some figures in here that I write that. They could have been, when they went in for the final go through today to, to balance things off, that's the final these are the final numbers. Right. So I guess Peter what I'm saying is it says here forty nine seven and this is our capital budget. Correct. So when you when you do simple math, you subtract the carryover and you subtract the honeywell and you're at thirty one. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out where are we at 33? Where's the other two and a half million dollars? Where is it? It's not showing up. This figure still says 49.79. Yeah. <clears throat> Everyone's listed in at that top of that. Yeah. Well, so how are we getting? He passed 31 tonight, and when Mark finds Correct. the other 2.5 or whatever it is, we'll just supplementary uh, estimate. Good point. On. Okay. Good. So how can you pass 31? Which projects are you passing and which ones are you not to leave there? Well, um, <laughs> maybe we're right on after you finish. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Mark, are you able to, if, if we gave you some time to go and check, can you come yeah. back and... No, I'd have to sit down with no. Councillor Bernard to okay. just iron out what he's let's, suggesting. Let's, let's just... We'll do, we'll do what Councillor Duffy says. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll pass it and we'll go through and find out where the other are. I mean, no. What the staff have indicated that it's hard to yeah. pinpoint yeah. which ones you're approving and which ones we'll, you're not. We'll, we'll pass it as is, Mr. It's Kelly. The, it's the products that, you, yeah. that we want mm -hmm. you to approve. If you only par partial pass partial, then no. they're not sure which products you're approving which ones you're not. Well, let me ask you this. If this is 47.9 million, how do you get 68? Yeah. Sorry, Councilor Bernard? Well, the paper says 49.790. 49.895 is what's here tonight. Okay. So that's different than this one. Yeah. It's so eight. we get regardless. Yeah. Peter started off with 68 million. So it's 68.5. Right. At gross. Gross. Partner funding of 22.8. Yeah. 
Okay. For 45.7. Yeah. We are tired. And then take your 12 off that. You're at 33. Right. Yeah. Okay. But that 33 includes the Honeywell arrangement yeah. as well. And some of those other figures last night or Thursday night, they, 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 they include it. We had a discussion on that. Possibly. I think I had Honeywell in there at 6.8 first. Correct. And seven. then I added the tax. 7.5. 7.5. 7.5. 7. Okay. Still in there. Not is even. it 7.5 in there? Yes, it or is. 6.8. No, 7. In the resolution, it's uh, minus. Um, no, but in the old numbers. Oh, the old numbers? It was 7 million. Um, 7.5 for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's just pass it as is and then we'll work out the details. Well, again, the, 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 the capital budget is, is a go-forward uh, process, okay? So it's a, the, the numbers will be corrected by our finance department, correct, Mark? Well, I, I think the numbers are correct okay. there. And there it is. All, Unless, and, all, and all projects, when they go to the tender, will be brought here for Council's approval leadership. Correct. So anything we're spending in this budget has to come back here to get voted on anyways. So then why don't we just pass it? No, 100 million dollars. No, 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 I mean, because we didn't go over it. We, we like, it likes to know what we're passing. Yeah. So when I left here Thursday night, right. it was 31.2. Okay. Today it's 33.5, and I have no idea where two and a half million came So if, if we meet tomorrow and we see it's 33 million dollars, are you going to pass it? Yep. Okay, well, let's pass it now. If I can find out. Well, why don't we defer it till tomorrow until we have You want to meet again? Yeah. Well, I mean, from, from You need 24 hours, so we have to leave it till Wednesday. The public. The public has a right to know sure. what budget we're passing, and if yep. we're still not sure, I mean, what's one what's one more day? Two days, because we have to give 24 hours. To, to do it right? Well, if it, takes, if it takes that, let's do that. You want to do that? Lunchtime on Wednesday. Lunchtime on Wednesday. Mark, did you get the numbers ready by then? For Thursday? I think I have the numbers right. I can sit down with counselors and go through them. So all I'm looking for, Mark, is just, just where we are from 31.2 to 33.5. That's all I need to know. Where the changes? Yeah, I, I'd have to sit down with you and see where you had the 31.5. But I can tell you right now. Sure. If we could do that and look line by line, we could identify it. Okay. Did you have your list from Thursday? No. Yeah. No. But what do you have at Parks and Rec? Well, that doesn't matter. We have a, we have a final total here of okay. what we're saying. But before. if we we're going to zoom in on changes, I'd need to go through each yeah. of the Good point. Okay, so you want to go through and see where there may be That would be where okay. the easiest way to identify it. Okay. What do you have for parks? Is that the first item? Why don't we do it through all that tonight? Maybe through so we can do that tonight. Wednesday if you want. Wednesday at noon <coughs> is available if council is available. What's that? Wednesday at noon is available if council is available. We don't have, we have, do have 24 hours. No. Right. Are you available Wednesday? Will Majority? Be. I'll leave Julie. You're all right? Another day. I think I'm okay. <laughs> right? You're all right. Councilor Did you say Wednesday at noon? Yeah. That yeah, be the nearest time for a 24 hour notice. Councilor Burke? I'll have to call the city meeting, but. Or phone in. Yeah. On our schedule. Councilor Burke. Once we get the figures. You're all right? Then we'll know. We can phone in. Yeah. Councilor Tweo? <coughs> so, <coughs> what are we doing here? We're going to come back on Wednesday and uh, go over the numbers with our finance <coughs> manager and then, uh, and then uh, ask the budget. Right, Mark? Good. I just want to know what two and a half million is. Mm -hmm. We do have a finance audit, audit tender or a finance meeting tomorrow, I believe. No, we don't. It's, no, it's canceled. It's canceled. Yeah. Okay. So, deferred? That would be my thing. It's up to my council. I mean, I'm only one person. Put a resolution on the floor? I'll put a resolution on that we do defer until we. So was that noon? Okay, second by Councilor Dunn. What's the outstanding issue? The numbers don't add dollars. up from what we were Two and a half million to. dollars. Pardon me? Two and a half million dollars. Two and a half million dollars. So, so Mark can't answer that? Well, I'll tell you it's through the figures. can see where the discrepancy is. He'll probably show us the figures on Wednesday, right, Mark? Uh, if that's the wish. Yeah. I'd have to have what we had have a sit down with Council Barry through 31.5. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we may, we'll find out that it's not 31.5, it's 33, 30, 33 million. That. Based on the schedule I have in front of me, okay. yes. Okay. Councilor Dunn? 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 Councilor Dunn?
Okay, all those in favor of deferred, please raise your hand. Councillor Cleo, yay or nay? No. Okay, nine to one. So I'll put that as deferral. Anything else? Don't know. Thank you. Peter. Yes, Councilor. I'm signing off now. Thank you. Okay. Move on to the next item. You're, you're all right. That's it. Hello? Hello? You'd like to hang up on the Peter? So now we're going to planning. Councilor? Thank you, Worship. Uh, tonight in planning, we have a total of four items or issues to address. Two of them are from the Planning and Heritage Committee, and two of them are from the Planning Planning uh, Board. Uh, first, uh, we'll do the Planning and Heritage Committee issues. The first one is the Automated Building Permit Approval. There's a, uh, a resolution in your package to approve this particular uh, uh, piece of equipment. It's going to help the Planning Department quite a bit in the processing of uh, building permits. I'll give uh, uh, Mr. Forbes the opportunity to speak to it if he wishes, but I think it's been around for so long that, uh, not for eons, but for a long time, that everybody's pretty well aware of what it does and why we need it and what we hope to do for us. Do you want to address it at all? I would just say to council that uh, there's a number of uh, different automated building permit systems out there. They range from 100,000 to millions. Uh, uh, the one nice thing about this particular vendor, uh, it is used in the city of Dieppe, and it's used in the county of Cumberland for services just outside of Amherst, uh, like a number of communities. So they, there is some uh, customers nearby. I think Council Rivard uh, on our trip uh, saw this product and we did a little bit of a, a tour to, to see some of these products in the past. So, uh, you know, we, we spent quite a bit of time reviewing the application. We think it's a robust tool. It will allow us to uh, to allow people to make an application online in the future, so uh, we're looking forward to, to moving along. Great. Taking some time. <laughs> right on. I'm just you your worship that uh, the rank ranking points, uh, it came first at the Davenport, the Davenport group that provides it, came first with an 85.5 rating, and the price tag is $98,454, plus uh, all applicable taxes. That's pretty well it, I think, they missed Yeah, yeah. So, do you want to read the resolution, Mr. Kelly? Mm -hmm. Or is there a resolution there? There are several. Mm -hmm. No, for the purchase of the... Yes, there yeah. is one. Yeah. Uh, but you see the mayor asks if there's do any you want to read the other ones first. Or do you want to just cover them all? Oh, uh, I would, whatever you wish. Yeah. Do you want me to do them all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the second uh, resolution in the package or the issue to be addressed is uh, we have a bit of a shortage of uh, staff in the planning department with... Uh, a movement of one of our, our urban planners. So, uh, we have uh, a new planner in, and we have one being interviewed, uh, competing at the present time. So, with that in mind, and the the uh, amount of business that's coming into the planning department, uh, we would like to employ Ira Burt, a former employee, to help us get over the mountain of work that we have to deal with. I think Ira's going to do building inspections and a bit of planning work. Uh, a little bit more planning work, but uh, that's where we're at, just a little bit uh, for staff. But okay. Uh, the other two are planning only. Uh, and I think uh, Councilor Cody, the Deputy Mayor Cody, or the Deputy Dewan, conflict on Angus Drive. The first, the first one on the planning area being Angus Drive. Uh, it's a, a, a request to proceed to the public meeting. And by the way, both of our issues are uh, requests to proceed to the public meeting. This one is to proceed to the public meeting to rezone Angus Drive from a single detached residential R1 zone to mixed use corridor, MUZ, MUC zone, and 413 St. Peter's Road from a low density residential zone to a mixed corridor zone and to amend Appendix A, future land use map of the official map plan official plan map for Angus Drive and 413 St. Peter's Road from mature neighborhood to village center commercial and further to consolidate lot 40 at Angus Drive, 4, 4, 413 of St. Peter's Road and 419 of St. Peter's Road 
uh, Bean Mills convenience store into one parcel in order to facilitate road upgrades by the province to St. Peter's Road and construct a second means of access to the convenience store uh, to and from Angus Drive. Basically, it's a, a median in front of Mills down to Angus Drive where there'll be a, a roundabout. And once again, it's just a permission to proceed to the public because of the um, uh, rezoning issue. Uh, the last one is 79 Parnell Street, and it's a request uh, to proceed to public consultation to amend the appendix approved site specific exception, exemptions to exempt 79 Parnell Street uh, from sections 34.2 of the zoning and development bylaw from the required permitted land uses uh, at the grade, at grade on walkable streets at grade appendix B approved site specific exemption for the official plan to exempt Say set 7.9 Pond Street from the de designated permitted uses, uh, which are business retail establishments types of things, uh, bars and that sort of thing, uh, uses on a walkable street as per section 4.23 of the official plan in order to allow residential dwelling units on the ground floor abutting a walkable street. So that also is seeking permission to go to the public meeting. That's, That's it. consultations. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So, we had some questions here. Council Bernard, do you have a question? I just have one for the manager or, or for the yeah. yeah. chair. Sorry. Um, building permit values for this year, up above last year. I guess you saw something the last couple yeah, of they, days. They, about they, they, yeah, last, last year we were, I think, record break. Yeah, like 180 million. million. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a very high, we've never been to that number before. Very so, so, what's it look like for this year? I would say. <laughs> Based upon what you know, it, it, it looks like about the it, you know, again, it's early in the year, but uh, yeah, it's still busy in there. There's a lot of big projects that are in the hopper, so I would say that it would be similar. I mean, I, I hate predicting into the future, which I can't control, but uh, that there's no indication that it's uh, things are slowing down at, at this point. No. Well, per year, so the revenues should be every bit as much more than uh, you know, presumably, there's still a lot of housing that needs to be built. There's some large projects underway that, that are in various phases of construction. A couple of big, large apartment buildings being proposed in the downtown. So all of these things, if they come to permit this year, they'll have a, a again, contri contribute to keeping those numbers up high as they were last year. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Not too bad there, Councilor. Okay. Councilor Duffy, good report. Record. Another record. Which one do you want to read first, sir? Your Worship, moved by Councillor Duffy, second by Councillor McCabe, that as per the conditions of the public request for proposals for electronic building permitting system, the best ranked submission by Davenport Group in the amount of $98,454 plus all applicable taxes be approved, Your Worship. Questions called? Questions called? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right ahead there, Your Worship. Thanks, Alice. Councillor um, Burke? I will be, I will be approving this, of course. Uh, oh. um, Davenport the company that we're going with software what municipality used that in addition to orders it was uh, just outside of amherst when we uh, uh just outside of amherst they, they they run the whole county of everything other than amherst yeah. from that particular shop so right. there's a lot, number of different municipalities yeah. the nice thing about that product since they're using it it's very scalable for small communities and large communities so this particular product DF is a, mar a larger center than we are, but but again, they have New Orleans and they have some major cities. Uh, so the nice thing is it's scalable. We don't need it to that level, but uh, but in future there's lots of capability to, to improve that system, and possibly other departments can uh, 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 take advantage of the permitting system that they can, can maybe come from parks and trees. But but it's a very good system for us. Thank you. Question? Call. Okay. All those in favor. Please raise your hand. So it's eight to zero. Your Worship, we Councilor Duffy, say by Councilor McCabe, that pursuant to the requirements of Section 20 of the Planning Act, RSPEI 1988, Cap P-8, and the requirements of Section 2.1 of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, PH-ZD.2, Councilor hereby appoints R. Burt as the designate development officer to administer provisions of the Zoning and Development Bylaw, with the exception of subdivision developments, rezoning, and variance applications. This delegation of authority shall cease if the job duties of the employee no longer require this designation, if the employee returns his employment or with the city of Shelltown or upon further written orders. So we have to call back in uh, the uh, yeah. deputy. Well, we have to go to the other one. Yeah. 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 Y
application. Yeah, no, but he can vote in this. Yeah, well, I know, but we, we, I put, left the room. Councilor Duffy, said by Councilor McCabe, to request to amend Appendix G, the zoning map of the zoning development bylaw for Angus Drive. Oh, no, 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 PID 1105451 from section 34.2 of the planning, sorry, of the zoning development bylaw from the required <coughs> land uses at grade on walkable streets and to create a new table, appendix B, approve site specific exemptions for the official plan to exempt 7 to 9 of Connell Street, PID 1105451. From the designated permitted uses on a walkable street as per section 4.2.3 sub 2 of the official plan in order to allow residential dwelling units on the ground floor abutting a walkable street be approved to proceed to public consultation. Okay. The questions come. Questions come. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. Sir. Thank you, sir. Moved by Councillor Duffy, same with Councillor Cave, that the request to amend <coughs> Appendix G zoning map of the Zoning and Development Bylaw for Angus Drive, Lot 40, PID 419143, from single detached residential large R1L zone to mixed use corridor MUC zone, and of 413 St. Peter's Road, PID 419135, from the low density residential R2 zone to mixed use corridor MUC zone. And to amend Appendix A, future land use map of the official plan for Angus Drive, Lot 40, PID 419143. And 413 St. Peter's Road, PID 419135, from Victoria neighborhood to Village Center Commercial. And further to consolidate Angus Drive, Lot 40, PID 419143. For uh, 413 St. Peter's Road, PID 419135. And 419 St. Peter's Road, PID 192187, <coughs> in order to facilitate a great up to in order to facilitate road upgrades by the province to St. Peter's Road, and construct a second means of access for the convenience store to and from Angus Drive, be approved to proceed to public consultation. This should be easy. Is there a question? Question to you. Um, it can be for Councillor Duffy. Uh, oh, sorry. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a question on, uh, has the government approached the uh, residents at all yet before our public consultation? Um, as far as the uh, neighborhood on Angus Drive, has there been any communication, do you know, between the province and the neighbors? Uh, Mr. Yo, the provincial engineer, was at the uh, planning board meeting. He didn't mention anything to survey the, the, local, the local people out there um, up until this point anyway. They could have, but he didn't mention it. He didn't. I, I can answer that. Just stand there? Yes. What's that? Mr. He Jones? did? They had been in contact with people with properties that okay. they did. Okay. Yeah. Just recently? Uh, last few months. Okay. Uh, Your Worship, uh, it is tendered. Uh, they, he did mention that, that on the uh, uh, call that we had at the planning board meeting that, uh, that, that it is tendered and it's, uh, I think they anticipated having it done by midsummer. Yeah. Uh, is there, there Because I asked the question. Yeah, exactly correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 He didn't, he didn't say anything about surveying the neighborhood. No, just when the tender will uh, Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Duffy, just to renew my my memory, is this the same area there we were discussing in 2017, was it, or 2018? Probably. In more regard to? Where they want to put the road behind the and back yeah. up that way to ease the traffic and all that stuff? Yes. It's the same yeah. idea. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks. Sorry, that that before the council talks. A different, a different oh, approach. No. Different approach to the whole okay. thing. Okay. Yeah. Different land purchased and that sort of thing, but it's the same basic problem being addressed. Okay. Yeah. Different and approach you know, because I, I, it's going to have a roundabout. Yes. I just want to refresh my mind because we and were for a little bit there with all those residents at that time too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, That's only the public consultation. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It, does, it does say here May 4th, 2015, Councilor uh, Ramsey, the, the application was rejected, the, the driveway in the past was rejected until it could be determined when the control intersection at the corner of Angus and St. Peter's Road were be constructed. Correct. Now the roundabout is being proposed. This will be on the back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your uh, Thank you. Councilor Berg? Yes. Can I the report? Yes. I'm just trying to get my site around the same area. Thank you. Question? Uh, question called. All those in favor? Um, raise your hand. 8 0. See, Your Worship, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank Just you. before you go, uh, Councillor Duffy. Yes. If you do look in your report there after your last resolution, mm -hmm. so end of February 2020, total for permit value was 5.4 million. Mm -hmm. End of February 2021, 18 million. 13 increase. <laughs> So you're right, Mr. Ford. <laughs> so almost 100% <laughs> increase in a year. We, we can feel those permits. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank with you. the automated system, you'll be able to push them through foot quicker. Maybe we need two automated yeah. systems. <laughs> can you just call volume one? one? <laughs> He'll call me. Right. I would have got one. No, he would not. It's coming through. <laughs> okay, next report is. Protective services. And that's no, 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 HR. Mm -hmm. Did you get me? It is HR. So, thank you, thank you, Your Worship. The Human Resources Communications and Administrative Committee met last uh, week, March the 5th. The minutes are included in your package. We have no resolutions for your consideration and. Um, I thought those came from finance, and then they're not mine anymore, are they? Oh, okay. I lied. We have two resolutions <laughs> for your consideration. And if I, if you have any other questions, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any Bye. questions? Any questions for the? No questions. Chair? Read the resolution, sir. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Going well, going well. Your Worship, moved by Councillor Yankoff, second by Councillor Deputy Cody, that the City of Shelltown ratify and adopt the attached negotiated memorandum of settlement to amend the collective agreement with QP Local 501 Civic for the period January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2022. Your Worship. <coughs> okay, questions called? Questions called? All of those in favor, please raise your hand. 8-0. Councillor Bernard stepped out. Okay. Your Worship, moved by Councillor Yankov, seconded by Deputy Mayor Cody, that the City of Shelton approve and adopt the attached draft on telecommuting policy effective March 8th, 2021. Okay. Question call? Who's that again, sir? Sorry, Your Worship, I didn't get to the last part of that. It's uh, that the City of Charlottetown approve and adopt the attached draft telecommuting Okay. Telecommuting oh, policy. Committee policy. Yes. Effective March 8, 2021. Okay, questions called. Questions called. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Councilor Bard, everyone. Or did you want to vote on it, Councilor Bard? Sorry, Councilor Bernard, do you want to vote on the telecommuting tele commuting policy? All the time, please. Yeah, that's no problem. You're in favor? I am. That's good. Anything else there, Councilor Yanka? That's everything, thank you. Okay. So the next report is protective service. All right, Worship, thank you. Members of Council, Protective uh, and Emergency Services Committee met on February 23rd. Uh, the minutes are included in your package. Uh, there is a second reading to amend the COVID-19 Temporary Patio Program Bylaw. Uh, and other than that, there's no resolutions. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No 
more questions? Okay. Okay. Want to read the resolution, sir? Actually, it's a second read. Second read. Second read. Yeah. Resolution. Okay. So, your worship, the purpose of this am uh, amending bylaw is to change the, the effective date of temporary outdoor patios within the city of Shelltown from October 31st, 2020, to October 31st, 2021. Therefore, be resolved that the city of Shelltown COVID-19 temporary patio program bylaw be read a second time, and that the said bylaw be now approved and adopted. Moved by Councilor Burge and seconded by Councilor Ramsey Rusha. Okay. Shall it pass? Uh, That's it. Carried nine zero. Uh, Parks and Rec and Leisure Activities Committee, Your Worship, met on February 16th and again on March the 1st. A copy of the approved draft minutes and the package. There's no resolutions tonight for consideration. Uh, do have Your Worship, the volunteer of the month is John O'Brien. Uh, so, Your Worship, I'm pleased to announce that uh, the winner is John O'Brien. He's been involved with the Sherwood Park and Rural Minor Hockey Association, Your Worship, for 20 years. As treasurer, John has just took over the role of ice coordinator for the last three years. So John's actually been volunteering at Sierra Park for my for 23 years. Mm -hmm. I happen to know John, uh, and I know John is, is, uh, is a fantastic volunteer and a, and a super guy. And I'm not surprised. Uh, I I am a little surprised he's been doing it 23 years. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, and that, that's quite a commitment. So. Um, Again, Craig, congratulations to John. I know John in the summertime, at least he can sit the golf and some while, it seems like he spends a lot of time with my hockey, whether it's the treasurer or whether it's the ice coordinator. Good. So, good congratulations on to John. It's, uh, it's volunteers like John that you know, keep these sports associations and be able to keep the race down and keep the function. So, good on John. The worship, we want to take a minute to congratulate our own Josh Curry. Oh, Josh, the community promoter from the American Hockey League to the National Hockey League, Pittsburgh Penguins. Taxi Squad. The Taxi Squad, Taxi Squad, as some people may not know, is a group of about four to six uh, players that are picked from the league below, the American Hockey League in this case. And they travel and practice with the team and are available to play the NHL games when they've been called upon. And Josh has been called upon. And he's been up playing with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And with it knows Josh, knows he's a fantastic personality, very well liked with all those that, that have met him. A trait he no doubt gets from his parents. Uh, Steve Curry was a uh, career police officer in the city of Charlottetown. Joanne, uh, his wife, uh, worked with my wife at the Penguins yes. Hospital. Great people. And Josh is one of them ones, you know, he goes through hockey and he continues to surprise. And I can remember, you know, people were, you know, would Josh make junior hockey? Would it make it the PEI Rocket? Well, Josh made it. They didn't, they, they didn't think he'd make an American hockey League team. Well, he made that too and he excelled there and uh, right now he's the captain of the team. But Josh has proven to be an underdog and has excelled at every level he gets the opportunity. The NHL is the highest level of competition and Josh is knocking on that door right now. Yeah. So good luck to Josh and look forward to watching him on a regular basis playing the National Hockey League. Congratulations to Josh. The worship uh, in our packets, as <coughs> some of you may see, the government of Canada has committed 31 million towards health, healthy communities initiative. Um, so your worship, in addition to physical infrastructure for that money, the fund places priority on social and digital infrastructure as well. So the fund will provide up to 250,000 per project. And so that, it can cover up to 100% of the project. So um, the city of Charlottetown, the Environment and Sustainability Department, is uh, collaborating with the Parks and Rec Department to create a, pre a project proposal 
that will act to revitalize outdoor community spaces within the city. So just to give everybody an idea, the project will include the addition of bike racks and rest stops that will improve residents' ability to use active transportation to move about the city and between different community spaces. Purchasing outdoor rink kits, and we've talked about this uh, within our own Parks and Recreation Committee. So this project will allow us to buy outdoor rink kits that will be paid for, <coughs> can be paid for through this program. That will increase the usual days of existing community rinks each winter. In addition, they will reduce the required frequency of flooding, thereby also reducing maintenance time and water consumption. So these kits obviously will come with, with ladders and some boards around them. So uh, third uh, pillar on this, is the launch of the 100 Benches Initiative. <coughs> Excuse me. I will add 100 new benches to green spaces around Charlottetown. This will make the current trails and walking paths more usable for those with reduced mobility, as well as make the spaces more comfortable for all to spend time in. So we all know we talk about the active transportation corridors and they have a number of them going in now. Uh, so this can be used you know, in our parks, in these, in these trails and the after presentation corridors. So, and the fourth, your worship, is the upgrade and addition of community vegetable planters to incorporate self-watering design. So, revitalizing community spaces and improving accessibility for those with reduced mobility is an essential component of building a healthy, vibrant city. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of outdoor spaces for physically distanced community gatherings, as well as the physical and mental health benefits that time outdoors nature brings. This project will act to provide access to a comfortable, vibrant outdoor green spaces all around Charlottetown, reaching as many residents as possible. So Your Worship, the estimated uh, project budget for this proposal is the 250000 The city will not be required to contribute funds to this total. So Your Worship is good. A lot of good news there. And the is. staff and the environment sustainability and our parks and rec staff are working together with this proposal together and, and uh, get it to the federal government. Yeah. And paid by someone else. Pardon me? Paid by someone else at 250000 So we worship the, uh, want to give an update on the uh, Simmons Sports Center. As Council is aware, since the third pad of care was no longer an option, Council has accepted uh, Plan B, which is to replace Simmons Sports Center and Pool at the Simmons location. Staff is currently working on an RFP for the schematic design services. The RFP is expected to be completed by the end of the week and will be posted for two weeks to receive bids. The Parks and Recreation Committee has already recommended the new facility have a walking track and the community space included in the new design and we are open to continuing to receive valuable feedback from the public. I'm pleased to acknowledge that we have received some excellent feedback from a few different groups, um, and one in particular called Friends of Sims. Yeah. I think we all would have got a copy of that, yeah. that email. Sent to, uh, so sent to all of us uh, as their vision for the Sims Sports Center in the pool replacement. Um, it is feedback our committee is pleased to receive, Your Worship, yeah. and although the vision uh, aligns well with the city vision on this project, I want to make it clear that the renderings that are posted on social media feeds are not renderings from the city of Charlottetown. Okay. It's from the Friends of Simmons. So uh, we, uh, we, we uh, have committed to receive feedback from residents. So when our preliminary design is done, we do and have, have committed to going to a public meeting receiving some feedback. We will do that. Um, in your worship, uh, once, we receive, once we go to the public meeting, um, and we received some further feedback, they don't go to final design. So we just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that those renderings, they're very professional, they did a very good job. They're very professional looking, um, and it does somewhat look like the city of Charlottetown, they put them up or not. So ours, you know, we're still, we're still working our way through the RFP, and we'll, we'll get the design done, then we'll have a preliminary whatever meeting, and then after that meeting, um, we'll uh, take any advice that we get, and we can incorporate it in the final design we will, and uh, then we'll go from there. So, so your worship, that's it for me. Sure. Unless there's any uh, any sure questions, there's, I'll do my best. Yeah, I'm sure, there's some questions. I'm state councilor Bernard. You want to go first? Thank you, your worship. Uh, thank, thank you, you. councilor Bernard, for your uh, for your report. Uh, yeah. Just for the record, um, 
I knew Josh Curry was going to be an NHL hockey player, coach of an Adam Double A, so I knew he'd make it. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Josh. That's, that's why I got the slow start, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uphill from there. <laughs> um, quick question on Simmons. So I know we're replacing the use uh, replacing Simmons with the the funds that allow for seventy cent dollars roughly. Seventy three. Yeah. So my question, I think I asked in the past, which I which I don't know if we've ever gotten an answer to, but. Is it is it is it a trade off of a pad for a pad, or is it a facility for a facility? And when I say that, you know, is there an opportunity potentially to put a twin pad in this area using seventy cent dollars under the fund versus? And that's just I'm curious if it's just a pad for a pad, or is it a facility yeah. for a facility? Uh, according to the criteria for the seventy three percent funding, it's to replace an older facility. So, no, if you're going to be, if you want to build two pads. You're only going to get funding for one for the one you replaced. That's so. So that's a pad for a pad. Okay, so that's what it is. So because I mean, right. you, can, you can expand the facility by replacing the other facility with a much bigger facility at a seventy-three cent dollar. If that's not a possibility. It is for a one service. Yeah, okay. and, that, and that's why the report had to be done to show how we're dismantling the, the, the facility. And the whole idea of the funding is to get closer to net zero as you can. So we have an old rink, 73 rink, you know, it hasn't been great for, for greenhouse gas or emissions. So this fund is, is for bills like this that you can get down yep. to zero. So you want to see what you're, what you're, what you're taking down. So, and, and just to go a little further, Councilman Barron, so the plan right now is to build a new pad beside the existing one. And pull. The existing one will stay open. When the new one is completed is when the existing one will come down. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. rink and pool. Rink and pool. Well, they're both going to be, we said we were both going to replace it, yeah. But the new rink, obviously you have to replace the pool. It's going to be right over where the pool is now. Councilor Ramsey and then Councilor McKay. Thank you, Councilor Barrett. Just another timbit to, or a fun note there with Josh Curry. I uh, was talking to somebody the other day that gets around with his brother. And he said the first game that Josh was called up with the Pittsburgh Penguins, he's sitting on the plane and he's trying to be nice and, and by himself. And he put his headphones on, and all of a sudden this guy sits beside him, Sidney Crosby. He said, "Oh, you're from Atlanta, Canada. I want to know more about you." So, so that's cool as for, I mean, for Crosby too. You know, to take that time that he heard that there's a kid here from from Atlanta, Canada. So that's a fun note, really. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Good, and I, I think I'm just piggybacking <laughs> up Councilor Roberts, no, good job, Josh Curry, too, yeah. Um, is the, when we're talking about this $0.70 cent dollars on the campus facility, so that's just for the ice pad is what I'm understanding, so all the other extras that we saw, these beautiful renditions, that doesn't qualify for $0.70 dollars? What, what do you mean there's extras? Well, if, if we plan and have, like, and a walking room. track and all of that, can that be part of that building? We're hoping a little bit, yeah. Okay. So does that have to be at one location, or are we able to spread some of those buildings out? It has to be at one. Yeah. So my understanding is, Councillor, that it's uh, we're replacing an older 73 facility that has old technology. Okay. It's not like That's what we're replacing. Okay. But we're also we're also uh, modernizing by you know, if you look down the next 20 years, I and mean, right now you want to have a walk track in it. Okay. You want to have you know, yes. So at the end of the day, we have a budget. And we were trying to stay within that budget. Um, and right now, I think the council has agreed that we would look to in the design phase. We would definitely be looking at putting a walking track in and a community room. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. it does have to stay in that one footprint, is what I mean. It can't spread there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Councillor Jerome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Uh So if, if this is seven, 73 cents on the dollar or whatever, would we ever look at something like a Cody Banks rink? It's, it's built the same amount of years. You know, if this was something that it was a $10 million rink and we only had to pay $3 million for it, would that be something that we could look at? Or, you know, I, di I didn't know the figures until it was here tonight, so. Yeah. I know we, we have a, a projected, you know, five to seven years of longevity uh, at Cody Banks, but at, at this cost, you know, with this program, you know, would we not be prudent to look at something like that? Yeah, I guess it's council you know, that would be a, that would be a council decision. Um, I don't think that's been talked about. Um, I think in the planning and that through John Hack, they were always intending on having Cody Banks as green, meaning they were going to twin a facility, 
Now, this, this event center that we've talked about, uh, the possibility of if that gets twinned, then that will replace Cody Banks and East Link Center would become a community facility. That's a ways down the road yet. Yeah. Um, so that's another discussion that we've had over Cody Banks. We know Cody Banks, uh, we're told. And actually, you probably better man to answer than that. I think another seven to ten years to figure they'd be at Cody Banks. Uh, based on the current structure, and that's not, you know, not on wood that the plant and everything, uh, but there was some upgrades done to the plant recently within the last uh, five years, so the building structure is is really good, so there's been no phase of building, so, you know, five, five to five to seven, okay. and it could be longer. So right now our, our, we're needing to replace Simmons, and that's our sort of that's needs to be done. Councilor Thank you, Richard. Thank you, you Councilor Bernard. Just a question for Frank, if I may. Yes. Just to follow up. Yeah. So, Frank, thank you. Is there is there any infrastructure at Simmons currently that can be, once it's decommissioned, can be used at Kobe Banks in order to, again, to help extend the life of that building? Like what? I'm just wondering if there's a if there's Children's something at Simmons that was in place yeah. recently that may be newer than something that Kobe Banks may have that we can we can shift over to give it. <coughs> And I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that would be looked at. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be wanting to like anything that was newly replaced in the last few years is still good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that would add to. Yeah, I would say yes. Yeah. So during our de uh, decommission report, if anything comes out of it that can yes. be utilized yes. elsewhere, uh, we will be sure not giving it away or disposing it. Yeah. So the renderings for the from the friends of uh, Simmons, I noticed it was the APM group that did those renderings. If you looked at the the renderings. Plus, we did receive a submission from the Charlottetown Curling Club too. All council, a bit of yeah. possibility. So I'm sure they'll be looking at bringing up something at the public consultation. Yeah, and, yeah, and there has to be discussion. That we, we just received a report. From, yeah. that was it, so. Any other any other questions? No. Okay, that's your report, sir. Please, yeah. worship. Okay, thank you kindly. Thanks, Frank. Is there a resolution? Frank. Oh, good. And we have water and sewer. Council of the Room. Thank you, Worship. Uh, the Water and Sewer Utility Committee met on Friday, or met on February the 10th, and the minutes are included in your package. Uh, I think that, that meeting was, was full of capital budget uh, projects and approvals, so um, I don't know if anybody had any questions regarding that. I can certainly try to answer them as best I can. And all the minutes are in your package. Thank you. Any questions for the Chair of Water and Wastewater? Seeing none, okay. Moving on, Economic Development, Tourism, and Event Management. Public Works. Yeah. Oh, Works. Oh, Public Works, I'm going too quick. I think I'm trying to make follow, get, get, get to his record. Yeah. I'm trying to get through this, and it's good. Okay, go okay. ahead there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Worship, uh, Public Works. The Urban Beautification Committee did not meet uh, this past month. Um, as we all are aware, the uh, um, staff have been pretty busy with, with trying to uh, uh, put numbers together for the capital budget. Um, winter operations are going along and it's good. I would like to say uh, just a shout out to the, uh, to the staff there, uh, working hard to keep our, our streets and sidewalks uh, up to snuff. Um, the Pacific Board of Persons with Disabilities have not met since the last uh, month of meeting and we're, we are meeting tomorrow. So uh, we'll have an update on that next month. And uh, just, I uh, have no resolutions uh, anticipated. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, one of our supervisors, Paul Lee, who had, had some uh, health issues there, but he's back home and on the mend. So I just want to uh, mention that. Uh, we'll be uh, speedy recovery. And I'll try to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions? I'll go through quickly. Okay, so we can go to economic development. Thank you, Your Worship. There he comes, there's, yeah, there. there's the duo. There. 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 Okay. So the Economic Development, Tourism, and Event Management Committee met on February 9th. The open draft minutes are in our package. The Arts Advisory Board did not meet. We don't have any re resolutions for consideration, but I will uh, give a little update on what's been happening for this department. The Ice City Festival will wrap up next weekend. It's been well received and a great addition to our winter offerings. 
With the recent CPHO circuit breaker, a couple of the indoor events with larger capacities will now take place outside of the originally published festival dates, including music and Islander, uh, Islander Day activities were a tremendous success with all events reaching their max capacity. And I, you do see a lot of families outside celebrating and enjoying a lot of the activities that you guys are putting on every weekend. Lots of positive feedback, better solid skating. It's been awesome. Staff have been working with GM Event Inc. on the development of a sport tourism action plan, which will serve as a guide for our sport tourism events through the end of the year as we navigate the post-COVID-19 recovery. Staff are also currently working with Sport PEI with respect to a bouncing back recovery webinar, which is upcoming this month. The Sport PEI Awards celebrating island athletes were held recently with our Sport Tourism Initiative score as the presenting partner. The mayor and the staff were in attendance with the mayor presenting the award for Sport Event of the Year to the 2020 U Sports <coughs> Women's National Hockey Championship. Staff continue to work on several fronts with the Canada Games Host Society with respect to the 2023 Games, most recently participating in a virtual consultation on cultural programming. Festival and Events Major Canada, or FAME, recently released the Roadmap to Recovery, opening the door to celebrate together again. The Mayor has circulated a copy to MP Casey as events have a profound impact on our city. Work has commenced on an event, Atlantic Event Strategy. The City of Charlottetown is a founding partner of this organization and will be contributing significantly to the exercise. With the recent CPHO circuit breaker, the Charlottetown Islander season was once again paused. However, I believe that the league play is about to commence again. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, Councillor McCabe. Any questions? That's a great one. Any questions? I guess you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Wayne. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Environment and sustainability. And the council response was not here, so who's the deputy? Vice Chair. Mitch is not here. No. Not at No. He's zoned out. Get a headache. <laughs> Is he dead? Uh, <laughs> the Department of Sustainability Committee met on February 11th and the 23rd. Draft Minister included the package. Um, the Mayor's Task Force at Active Transportation and the Cheryl Health Food Council met on February 16th. The Minister included the package. So this is no resolutions tonight to be considered. Um, some updates. Uh, the monthly transit ridership for February 2021 was 29,153 compared to February 2020 when ridership was 58,210. We all know why that's there. Transit is currently maintaining about 49% of its normal ridership. Monthly ridership from high school participants in the student transit. Later this week, the city will release a call for applications for both the Community Garden Program and the Community Planters Program. This is an effort to gauge interest from the community on the addition of new locations for the vegetable planters and community gardens. Priority areas of the city have been identified and will be the focus of any new food assets that are developed. Your Worship, currently the city has community vegetable planters in six parks and there is one community garden on city park. These assets are an important component of improving food security in Charlottetown. The, city's, uh, the City of Charlottetown's proposal to the uh, to province's climate change fund successful, successfully received $87,150 of funding towards the implementation of a program to help residents adapt to flooding risks and climate change. The Resilient Homes, Parks and People project will include a speaker series on home flood resilience and a number of demonstration projects on both residential and city property. So, can you worship? That's all I have. Uh, no, there's more. Oh, no, no. For the next several months, for the next several months, 19 level two electric vehicle charges will be installed in Charlottetown. Uh, good news. This project is a partnership with, between Maritime Electric and several PEI municipalities that recently received funding through. Narcan and RCAN to install 50 charges on PEI. These charges help the city reach and double our target laid out in the city's community energy plan for charger installations and are an important step in reducing community emissions. The city's sustainability and public works department have worked closely yours on this initiative. So you know it just goes to show there's another couple of departments that are working together to make things happen in yours. And so it's good to hear that. Yeah. So if there's any questions I'll do my best to answer. Any questions? 
You do have a second reading there, Mr. Kelly. Yes, Your Your Worship, to amend the City of Charlottetown Tree Protection Bylaw to clarify when trees on the property line are city owned trees and when the city <coughs> conducts tree maintenance on private property. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown Tree Protection Bylaw be read a second time and that the said bylaw be now approved and adopted. Approved by Council Trio, second by Council Bernard. But Council Trio is not here. So I'll need another name, sustainability, uh, yeah. uh, Councilor Baird, and Councilor Baird, Councilor Baird, Yeah. Shall I pass? Pass. pass. Okay. Kelly's in conflict. I, I'm just uh, accepting the issue with regards to this in <coughs> uh, Council McLeod, it is going back to finance. Oh, this is? Well, yeah. It doesn't say that here. Just no. It's going back to environment. Oh, it is. Is It, it is. Cool. It, it was in yeah. finance and it's going back to environment. Yeah. Right. Okay, so, cool. Well, That's good. Cool. I just what, have a question. question. Well, uh, I guess the question is, is that um, the, there isn't a lot of difference between the local and the, 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 the winning bid. So I'm just wondering, was there any consideration given to the local? company instead because right. we're, we're, we're supposed to be promoting local when it's you know as, as much as we can uh, yeah. and in some cases you can't because it's uh, too far spread but in this case it's not a whole lot of money I'm just wanting over a three-year period yeah and I guess if we're supposed to be supporting local I don't know if we're, I mean everybody wants to support local so someone should have probably put it in the tender yeah. that we would prefer local yeah. but now we're asking to go out this company that you're referring to yeah. was with the city the last three years Oh, yeah. Everything to ask questions is it. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, yes, nice to support local, yeah. but then you put the city in pipe in a reliable situation. You're asking for bids, mm -hmm. you have companies come and bid, and then we're starting to say, oh, well, you know what? Uh, after, after they're rated, after recommendations made, yeah. then we have to people say, oh, you know, I don't like them. I, I, we, we should do local. Put it in the tender. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. So I understand it went to finance. You know, I just heard tonight that it's going back to environment. environment, like environment already made a decision on it. Yeah. I don't know going, right, back going back for reconsideration, yeah. correct, uh, Councilor? Yeah, we, we probably shouldn't right. do too much because it's going back to yeah, the back to council again. For yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's all right. No, that's and, that, and I saw it in the package. Yeah. It should have been. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Devon, a few. Your Worship, we spend, we spend an awful lot of time on this particular issue. I mean, on the local versus uh, well, non local. Just on, on, like, we keep getting dragged into these tenders for, you know, like, it's. Uh, we should leave our staff to do the mm -hmm. do their job, and hey, we do what we can, and hope we do hope we do a, a good job. But every second tender we put out, every third tender, somebody's coming across, coming along with some big and better idea. Uh, so it's getting a little monotonous, a little expensive. Uh, you know, it's it's staff staff time, and, and time is money. Uh, but my own personal thinking on this buy local, uh, like my wife and I. We try to buy local. We spend, we're spending our money, it's our choice, whether we're gonna pay for a bag of oranges, we're gonna pay uh, $4 or, or $7, we'll, we'll go with, with local to support them. But we're spending other people's money here. It's not our money. It's, people give us money, they call it tax money, give it to us, and we in turn buy goods and service for the city. And our job is to get the best goods and service for the best possible price. We don't have to do that when we're using our own money, but when we're using other folks' money, uh, it's a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Could we just go to the deferral because it's been deferred back to the yeah. committee? I just said, uh, did you want to respond not in depth at all? About this? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Thank you know, very much, Your Worship. Councilor Time, time. Great right ahead. Save a little, very little. I agree with you 100%, um, but I think it's our job as councillors 
um, to make sure that staff are following the process. That's all. And sure. I just want to know. Yeah. It's just a question, right? And, sure. and as long as uh, staff, you know, they come back or the counselor comes back and says that, you know, it's good, then that's good for me. I was just yeah. asking the question. Yeah. It's, it's just, it'll be back to environment sustainability and they'll deal with it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, can we move on? Can we get the, uh, Mr. Forbes, can you knock on the door there and tell Mr. Kelly he's out back in? Any other questions on that? Yeah. <clears throat> Strategic priorities. Thank you, Your Worship. Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship. We met on uh, Thursday, March 4th. Uh, the minutes are in your package. The Affordable Housing Advisory Committee did not meet since the last meeting of Council. The Youth of Engagement Advisory Committee did not meet since the last meeting of the Council. There are no resolutions. Any questions? We will certainly entertain them. Councillor Duffy, do you have a question? Uh, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor Ramsey. Councillor Ramsey, um, as you know, and most people in this council know, and I'm sure they all know, uh, the city is in the process of drawing up a strategic plan. And the reason any organization has a strategic plan is to to find out what's going on in their realm of activity. And, and through the plan, you find out what is needed within your community, within your organization, within your company, and where to put your money. Uh, without a plan, your every day is a new day and you have different uh, different uh, emphasis in different areas and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and, and the reason for the, the strategic plan is to make optimum use of, of our resources in the future. In order to draft uh, this plan of action, we require information. Some of this valuable information is obtained from our residents. Uh, one way we obtain this information is from a, a resident survey. I'm led to believe that there seems to be some sort of movement to stymie or put on a shelf the resident survey, but I, I hope this is, doesn't come to fruition because uh, without the resident survey, our strategic plan will be put on the shelf right next to it and we'll never get it done. We'll never have it done for, for this time of year. And we've heard count our fellow councillor, Councillor um, uh, McCabe here, uh, almost pleading with us to get up and get going with the strategic plan because for every month we don't have it, uh, we're losing money. We're just not having our, putting our resources in the right place. So, uh, and if we delay it too long, like I say, it's, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be done in this term of, of office. So with, without, the, without the survey, it's certainly not going to be done. So I'm asking Councillor Ramsey here, as the chair of, uh, of uh, uh, strategic planning, if you could, if it's required, is a resolution of council to ensure that the, the uh, resident survey continues on its, its path. Because without it, without the resident survey, there's no strategic plan. Without the strategic plan, uh, our money's just going out hand over fist. And, we all know as an exercise at dinner time today and earlier tonight, we don't have money to throw around. So I, uh, I support Councillor McCabe and her efforts to get a strategic plan underway. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Councilor Ramsey. And yes, this was brought to our meeting the last week, I believe, or Thursday. And I was surprised, but we put it out, what we do, we put it out to our members. And they were not in favor of it at this time. And I thought it was a great idea. We're getting feedback. And this is not something that's going to happen tomorrow, next week, or something like that with, with, with the residents' feedback. This is for two years, four years, six years down the road. So we have a plan. Whether we're all here in two years' time or four years' time, I don't know. But this is a plan. So we, we want their input with it. And I'm surprised, like, to be honest, that it didn't go through. But then I got to speak for the for our group and they voted with three nothing so this is why it was put on hold as of now because i thought it was supposed to start this week in my crypt mr kelly i think we we're all set to roll out this week and you say your group you're talking with your committee yes i am yes i am so this is what it is and uh, and they voted not to put it out at this time everybody has their own personal reasons we didn't get into that but i thought we we're we're going to roll it out this week in fact starting today and it didn't happen, so this is why it was off the table. I hope that answers like, some of your concerns. But I think it's a great idea, my own personal opinion, and I'm not worrying about what people are thinking about us as counselors because it's a, it's a learning tool that you learn from. We're all talking about learning tools. 
that, that, that we're supposed to graphs on, on here, and this is what it is. And, and as I keep emphasizing, this is not that's going to take effect this six months or something along that. We just want people's opinion on the whole thing. That's all it was. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor McKay first. You know. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Councillor Duffy, for supporting this because, uh, yes, I have been asking for this as we're entering um, almost into our two and a half year part of our term as council. Because what, what a strategic plan does is it provides us with, with a roadmap, kind of a, a vision of where we would like to see our city be in years to come. Uh, it provides us with accountability, with transparency, and we're forever evaluating, changing it, modifying it. I look at our environment department here at the city. They have had a strategic plan for their department. And this year we saw that a lot of the things they had in their plan has been checked off. So now they're heading back to add to their strategic plan and develop it more. We need to do that as a city. We need to be accountable. We need to hear what residents, what's important to residents. I, I'm not sure why anyone wouldn't want to get more feedback and more evaluation on, on everything and how we can do better. We can always do better. We are here to represent the people. It's important that we hear this. This is an important piece, and I personally would like to move that we get this on the floor to proceed with the community um, survey or whatever it is that you're whatever you're calling it to to not put a stall on the strategic plan, but to at least start this process so we can get in two years. Thank you, Councillor uh, Hancock. Thank you. I maybe I'm missing a few sheets. I don't have any of that information in the minute. So. It was a closed session, wasn't it? It was a closed session. It's a closed session. Oh. Why would that be closed? Ask the uh, chair. Uh, there's the chair. Back. Chair, why was putting closed? I was told it was, it was going it to close your work today. Mr. Keller, am I right or wrong? I don't know. It was uh, the draft proposal at the time of for dis for discussion, so um, it was there for in information to move um, to move uh, forward, Your Worship. But it was not the final product at the time until okay. the end. Okay. Uh, just one second. Oh, just Councilor oh, Bernard. Sorry. Go ahead. Go sorry. ahead, Councilor Bernard. Go I ahead. You're up. You're up. Because Councilor Dean got passed. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, Councilor Randy, could you just answer for me? I'm, I'm trying to figure out why your committee you're saying it's fearing nothing that didn't want to release it. What would be. Reading it sounds like it's something that we have talked about in there. It sounds like it would be a good plan. So I was just wondering, yeah, is there just a reason? Guys, just in a point of order, because it was a closed session, uh, we'd have to go into closed session to discuss it. I don't know why it was, it was put into a closed session, correct? correct. So you're discussing. Because it was only a draft of the questions that were going to be in the survey. Yeah. I'll, well, I'm not saying too much there. And, uh -huh. and we all reviewed it in our. And like four or five people reviewed it. What correct? we could do is. And then we went from there. And then we can complete this so the CAC can. report and then we'll do a closed session at the after. Sure. Correct? Is that all right? To provide direction. Yep. You don't need to yep. be open, right? You don't need to be an open to provide direction. Uh, no, it's um, closed session. The council can give direction yeah. anytime. Yeah. So we'll go into a closed session at the end of this. Meeting. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Anything else for Councilor Ramsey's report? To Councilman Clown, did you have a question? No, no, not on this number. Thank you. You're all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can we go to the Council Advisory Committee report? Thank you, Your Worship. Yes. The Council Advisory Committee met on February 26th, and the open draft minutes are included in the package. We have um, two resolutions for your consideration this evening, and if you have any additional questions, I'll do my best to answer. Question, I'm just, Councilor no. Gamecock, I'm just trying to get clarification number one. So I thought we voted one of the councillors to fill that position. Are we sending number one? Like, I'm. Are we sending? We had. Yes, you we had. We had Councilor Randy Gamecock. Yeah. 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 That's what we discussed in CAC. There's a second Yeah, so this resolution here is replacing gotcha. paper loans in, and then there's the one. Do you want to read it there, Mr. Kelly? Mr. Worship, moved by Councillor Hancock, second by Councillor Duffy. 
that the appointment of the Chair of Strategic Priorities and Intergovernmental Cooperation Committee in the attached resolution dated January 13th, 2020 be rescinded. Yes. You want to vote in the first one first? Yeah. yeah. Vote in the first one. We want to rescind the one of January 13th. To rescind that, that it's the chairs of strategic is the appointment rather than the other one that they want to put on. Okay. That's what. Sorry, you have the second one there as well. First one first, right? <coughs> Questions? Have to vote this one first, Your Worship? Okay. So the first one we're voting on is the chair of strategic priorities here. To be sent. Be the same. Got it? All right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and one that is being rescinded is that. No, this is being rescinded. That, that, that one's from January. So that, this is the one in place. So this is being rescinded. Right. Yeah. You have to vote on both of those separate Yes. Yeah. So th yeah. this one's being re rescinded to worship, and then there's one to come forward. Yeah. Okay, so do I have the one to be rescinded? Is that the appointment of the Chair of Strategic Priorities and Intergovernmental Cooperation Committee in the attached res resolution dated January 13, 2020? That should be 2021? Correct. No. Which is 2020. Yeah. Rescinded. One and two. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hands. It's um, in. Okay, now you want to read the next one, sir? Yes, sir. Jumping with Councilor Yankov, Suffolk Councilor Duffy. Whereas the city of Charlottetown is an active member of the Canadian Capital Cities Organization, the CCCO, and whereas the city holds two voting seats on the board of directors, with one member being a tourism officer, and whereas the CCCO failed, falls within the Economic Development Tourism Event Management Committee, in terms of reference, therefore it be resolved that the council appoint the chair of Economic Development, Tourism and Event Management as the city's second representative on the Canadian Cities, sorry, Canadian Capital Cities Organization Board of Directors. Councillor, do you have a question? The, the, the elected official that was first appointed, I'm assuming that they don't want to go there and, and they were talked to before we changed it to the chair of economic No. Mm -hmm. I think there wasn't a point at May, was there not? Back in January, yeah, I was appointed to it. Okay. But because I was no longer chair of that strategic planning. So nobody appointed after you? No. Okay. No. So what you're doing is just clarifying that the yeah. chair of economic development will be the one who represents us at the CCC. Okay. Thank you. Sure. If I may, Go right ahead, I'd David. like to speak on this for a second. Yes. And if you want to blame anybody, you can blame me. But when I was chair of economic development and all that, that was under us, and we were going pretty good, and Alana thought she would like to do that role with us. So we as a council approved, oh, I, I, I should say, Oh, Councilor Yankov, sorry on that. <laughs> but, but we approved her at that time to go to take that role. And then when she got off, when the, the, the whole committees were changed, well, then she went there, and then she just kept that role, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And we agreed with that. But now, it was before it was stated that I should have had that role, but I didn't want not have that role. So I put it up to our committee, which I found out was not right. It was the wrong way to go down that road that it should have went back to the CAC. And then once I checked with the terms of reference and everything, it works with the Economic Development Tourism Officer. So that's where it should be sitting. Yeah. And that's why I kept saying, why is it under our committee? It, because it's standard rate in the terms of reference that they worked at. And if push came to shove, a Councilor Yankoff should still be sitting on it because it's a three year term. And she's only been in for about an hour and a half. So if there's ever was, a gray area there where they can just say you can keep it so but at the same time they don't want to do that we got but, but it was probably my fault for for not seeing the rules properly and i apologize for that but anyway no, no, that's okay, yeah. sir. thank you very much question call question call all of those in favor of the resolution please raise your hand nine zero okay thank you that's it uh, Move to go to closed session. Yeah, just one second. Just one second. Yeah. Okay, so if you find a 119, what section? What are we Subsection 119E. Okay, there they are. Oh. 
Okay. So we have a resolution. We're going to Thank go you, into a closed session under section one oh, nine, two, two, subsection one E. Correct, Mr. Patricia. One E of the MGA. All those in favor? Okay. So we're into the closed session. That was moved by Councillor Duffy, second by Councillor Reaver. Going to close. Yeah.